Up till now, these videos have mostly been about setting up a basic Plan 9 system. A standalone single user terminal with storage, then a file server with authorization for multiple users. Big deal, you might think, and it isn't that interesting, really. These sort of features are common today, and Plan 9's peculiar way of doing things isn't much of a draw, so why use Plan 9? One of the interesting concepts that was early to Plan 9 was the idea of a CPU server. A CPU server can load up the file system from the file server like a terminal, so we can just boot the CPU server off a thumb drive. Service equals CPU means it will not load a graphical interface, but instead set up listeners for outside connections. Unlike a file server, these connections are not specifically for serving files off the hard drive, but it can serve files in the broad Plan 9 sense. We also want to specify an NVRAM partition or file to store the host owner and password so the server can boot without intervention. You will also have to have a monitor and keyboard for the first boot to enter that host owner name and password. Uh, to keep things straight on this demonstration network, I'll keep using Glinda as the host owner. Right now I'm logged into the file server with draw term as Glinda to make some changes to the configuration files. To help automate some things, I've added a NDB local entry for the CPU server. It uses the MAC address to identify the machine and assign it a name. That way, inside the Plan 9 network, I can access it by simply calling for demo CPU. Uh, you can find the MAC address for your machine by reading the file net ether0 addr for address. And you can see here it brings up the MAC address for the file server. I'm now using one of the Dells as a terminal, logged in as the regular user. Suppose you want to do something really CPU intensive, but you don't want to bog down the computer you're using, or bog down the file server by making it do all the work. In my case, I'll be demonstrating 9Front on Raspberry Pi system soon, so I need to cross-compile all the 9Front software on the file server to run on ARM64. So in Legacy Plan 9, you use the CPU command, and in 9Front, it's rcpu. The dash u tells it to run whatever in this window as user Glenda. And to make this more fun, I'll run Rio in this window so you can see the stats for the CPU server. And let's bring up a stats for the file server too to see what it's doing. Now let's get to work with cross-compiling the system. And while that's doing that, let's, uh, let's play some YouTube-friendly music. But this terminal doesn't have speakers plugged into it, but the CPU server does. So this will ask for the audio devices from the demo CPU and place them before or in front of the audio devices on the terminal here. And there we go. So right now I'm serving files on one computer to be cross-compiled on another and sent back. And I'm reading the MP3 off the file server, decoding it on the terminal, and streaming the audio to a device on the CPU server.
So what I've done here is I've lashed together the parts of three old computers using namespace manipulation and a handful of shell scripts. Uh, want to try out kernel hacking? Store the files on one computer, do the coding on another, test it on a third. I can reboot the CPU server over and over and not be interrupted at the terminal or worry about files on the file server. Uh, make a sensor network out of Raspberry Pis and the file server can just read them as if they are local and save the data. Uh, the original Unix was designed by programmers to be a hacker's playground, and not, Plan 9 takes it a step further. And it really shines in a world where computers are cheap and everywhere and all network together. I hope this gives everyone some ideas, and uh, have fun.